So how were you able to scale that Wendy's business to become the number one franchise owner in the world? Well, uh, we started off uh, like most companies at that time. If you're black and you're going to get involved, they're going to put you in the black area town. And so it was no different. We started in Milwaukee because I spent all those, those years there with uh, five stores in the in the inner city of Milwaukee. And they were not very good restaurants, but I figured if we worked at it, you could turn things around. I, and I'll tell you, the, the average volume of those five restaurants was only $600,000 a year. And you're not making any money at that volume. Today, those restaurants, and my son runs them, so we still have a lot of them, but they, they do over $2 million in sales. And how do you do that? By getting involved with the people and letting people know that you care about them. Now, how do you do that? Uh, back at that time in Milwaukee, if you got stopped for any traffic violation, they uh, took you to jail. It was a crazy law that I'm glad they've changed, but where was all of our people at? They were in jail. So we were bailing people out every day, and, and I could take you through other things that we did to help show people that we cared about them. And once they realized that we cared about them, then they cared about the business, and they cared about us, and we grew. And as we grew and added more stores, we were able to promote people from a general manager to a district manager to an area operations person. And after a while, we had a whole lot of people making over $100,000 a year. And, uh, and you would say, you know, how did that happen? And it was in, in what I would call the, a real American dream. You could come go to work if you had just natural common sense and you were willing to work hard, you could make a good living for yourself. And we had people that went on from there and became franchisees on their own. So turn around and it was a matter of helping people. And then one day I looked up and we had 275 Wendy's restaurants. And then I turned around and we had 125 Chili's restaurants. And then we had 500 restaurants, you know, and 25,000 people working for us. So. Scaling looks likely. My brother Rich, first congratulations, Clutch Sports, 10 years in business. It's interesting, I'm listening to Junior speak and he was thinking he had to get a job after the season was over. And your job is to make sure that the guys are doing stuff that are productive outside of basketball when their seasons are over, out, and in addition to their contracts. But I want to congratulate you. I want to run up some numbers, all right? Anthony Davis, a client, three years, 186 million. Draymond Green, four years, 100 million. Fred Van Fleet, three years, 128 million. Jeremy Grant, five years, 160 million. DeJounte Murray, four years, 120 million. Oh, and Jalen Hurts, five years, 255 million. My brother, you've had a great summer. <laughs> can, he, can he come back and represent me? <laughs> we'll negotiate it. You've had an amazing summer, $2 billion in contracts, but I know it's well, not Make some noise for that, $2, $2 billion. billion in contracts. Number one agent, sports agency, owned by a black man. Owned by a black man. That's a fact. But it's bigger than money with you. It's more about the education. I want you to talk about that because we can see what happens if you're doing something outside of the field. Yeah. Uh, first, I want to start off by saying I, I really appreciate this room. Um, it's a really beautiful room. So thank you guys for, for showing up and, and wanting to hear us talk. Um, yeah, I think I had a great summer, you know. Uh, there was some in there, Quentin Williams, you know, signed a hundred million dollar deal. But I said this and I'll say it again, and this is how life come around in full circle. Ironically, out of all those numbers you named, the most important deal I did this summer was for a kid named Chris Livingston. And he was the last pick in the draft this year. He was the 58th pick in the draft to the Milwaukee Bucks. And the reason why I felt that that was the most important is because I think people underestimate how important it is to just have a start in something. People really underestimate that. And so for me, to be able to give this kid an opportunity 
for him to have guaranteed money to where he don't have to scratch and claw and he can kind of take some time to develop as a ball player. And for me to make this deal with the Milwaukee Bucks, understanding who they were as an organization, it wasn't about the money for me. It was about growth opportunity for him. And so I, 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 I placed him there. I, I picked up the phone and called teams 37, 38, 39, 40, and tell them, don't draft him. Please, don't draft him. 